you know, I've had friends and uh, family uh, talk to me about a uh, news uh, story that was done by Channel 6, ABC Fox, Channel 6 in Columbus, Ohio, and uh, by a reporter by the name of Lou Ann Stoyer. And I wanted to do an update. Actually, she did it last month, and I wanted to wait until I thought and was calm and wasn't speaking out of anger or um, um, come over as, you know, how pissed off I was. Um, so I'm going to try to do that in this video. It might take a couple tries. It might take, you know, uh, I'm not sure how long. I'm, I might have to split it. Um, but here's some basic facts that I needed to tell you. First of all, I was president of Crime Stoppers for many years, and um, um, Crime Stoppers, nonprofit organization in Columbus. It's all over the country, but we're we're made up of a board of men and women, approximately 40 to 50 people on the board, elected onto the board. Um, meet once a month to decide the which direction the way the program is going. Each board member has a vote; they can decide you know, yay or nay on anything. They can bring up topics at any time. And then we have an executive meeting once a month, which is an open executive meeting that anybody could come, even if you weren't on the executive board. And there's uh, six people on that board, or six people that showed up, six to eight every meeting. And everything was voted on. So it wasn't like it was one person's operation. It was actually, you know, a group of people. And the way that I looked at it, I was the executive director, spent 40, 50 hours a week volunteering, not a paid position, volunteering my time and getting the word out on crimes that happen in our community and working to build programs in the community to, to bring Crime Stopper a trusted name. Um, well, uh, let's bring back to, you know, I'm no longer president and uh, that's a, a story right there that I will we'll definitely be going into later. Um, into the legal realm, but um, uh, on a lawsuit. Um, but I, I, I won't, don't want to go into many details about that right now. What I want to talk about is, is the story that Lou Ann Stoyer with Channel 6 ABC Fox did. Uh, first of all, Lou Ann Stoyer has been in several different news media from Channel 10, uh, WTVN. She's also worked for the uh, New Albany School Board and other positions. And her jobs have all been terminated or she's been eliminated for one way or another. She just recently started at Channel 6. Her husband is a deputy chief with the Columbus Police Department and he's a deputy chief that I've had words with, not very nice words with. I have not had any type of uh, respect for the way that he ran uh, things in the Columbus Police Department. Um, I've actually talked to the safety director, the mayor's people, um, about the way things were going and um, even sent a letter um, uh, when the uh, deputy chiefs uh, uh, really didn't support crime stoppers and, and really was on them. I, and some issues that you were just stupid, credible, childish things that the Columbus police were trying to push crime stoppers out of because they were, we'd begun, we had become too strong in the community and too strong with the elected officials. They did not like it. They could not control us. So Luann Stoyer is deputy, her husband again is deputy chief. Uh, the news director with Channel 6, her husband's uh, lieutenant with the Columbus Police Department. And they have other people that work for them that their uh, loved ones are um, law enforcement. So law enforcement had a love hate relationship with Crime Stoppers. Uh, very successful from uh, the 270 shooter, if you remember that, raising money and helping you know, collect information to even uh, on three different times when police officers were killed, providing information that led to the arrest and conviction of those people that were responsible for it, as well as many other crimes in central Ohio. We were very, very uh, successful in, in what we did. The other thing with Channel 6 is they used to be an exclusive with Crime Stoppers. We only gave our stuff to Channel 6. Soon after I became president, it became evident that to really make this program growing, Crime Stoppers should belong to the community, not to just one station. So we made arrangements to go to all the media and give all of our information to all the media. Channel 6 was very upset with that because, as they said, that they were, we were their franchise. Um, they felt that they owned us and that if we went with any other media that they would stop putting our stuff out there. 
And that's exactly what happened. They stopped. We went to uh, 4 in Channel 10 and, I, and opened it up to all medias to take our stuff. And Channel 6 dumped us. And we had become so successful, they had to come back to the table and, and we, because they were really not looking good in the community. And so they had to come back into the table and, and uh, start working with us on it. So Louie Ann Stoyer gets to uh, Channel 6. Uh, Crime Stoppers has an audit done. Um, the audit is, is shown to be that there's nothing wrong, cleared. Uh, three months after the fact, she decides to do a story on it. Now, the dispatch did a story and said that it was the audit show, no wrongdoing, it was clear. Um, the uh, Channel 6 decides to do a story. And, and Luann Stoyer, whose husband a, is a deputy chief, decides to slant in a way that made me look like I had done something wrong on it. And I was a little taken back. I was taken back, first of all, when I found out that she was doing it. I called up the news director. And I knew what direction she would go because her and I have had conversations when she's at WTVN radio station. Uh, WTVN radio dropped us um, and we took them off of our website. Cause we, and on our website we used to put all the medias that were involved in helping the community and we dropped WTVN. She was upset with that and um, I told her, well, it wasn't fair to the other media that if you're not going to carry our stuff, that you're not supporting us, so we dropped it. So she, we've had emails, a phone conversation, it was just, and she was attacking me then. Um, so I knew that this story was going to be on attack because I knew of her husband. I knew the, the, what happened at WTVN. So I called the news director up and I said, you know, I, the only thing that I ask that that it's fair and balanced because I just know which way she's going to slant it. I just news director whose husband is a uh, lieutenant with the Columbus Police Department. So oh, no, it'll be fair and balanced. We know, we know. And of course it wasn't fair and balanced. It was like if you read the dispatch and you read, you saw what uh, she did, it was two different stories on it. And it really made me, I had friends and family that thought that I had, did, I had done something wrong. I have, I can't get a job now in, in Columbus because of the way that she, and the way that they carried it and the way people stalk, started talking. I have friends, people that I've known that won't talk to me now, that actually you know, for whatever, after they saw that, instead of calling me up and asking me, instead of, you know, investigating, uh, they just made the decision on just because they believe everything here in the news is true. And unfortunately, it's not. You know, Channel 6 has some great reporters over there, and I've had some very success with working with them, but they also have reporters there that are just out for their own personal um, and I think Luann Stoyer did that, and she did it the way that she wanted to do it to make me look like I had done something wrong. You know, Channel, the story should be, you know, why we have over a, a thousand unsolved homicides in central Ohio. Why there's not enough detectives to properly work the case. Why the eighth floor, the commanding staff of the Columbus Police Department, takes such a dim view to homicides, especially in the urban community. I had one deputy chief tell me that they felt that the homicides of young African American was a thinning of the herd because most of them were drug dealers and they put those homicides on the bottom. They just dropped them to the bottom and they didn't give them any attention. I had this conversation with a deputy chief with the Columbus Police Department. I also had the conversation with the safety director letting him know, the people in the mayor staff, what was being said. Um, I also had someone um, in the staff I, um, said that they would lie, steal, and cheat to put someone in jail if they felt they were guilty. Now this is, I, I don't want to direct this at all police officers because again there's great police officers in the Columbus Police Department that really do care about what their job is and the community. But unless, like most companies, most jobs, you have people that don't, that aren't caring, that are doing it for their own agendas. That you know, all they care about is the money and they don't care about the police. You know, mo most, this is what I find sort of interesting, most of the 8th floor staff uh, um, don't have any, res the, the officers don't have respect for them. Most of the, and this is the other thing that's sort of, most of those police officers don't even live in Columbus. Most of the 8th staff don't live in Columbus. You know, they have the opportunity to get in their car with their gun, go home into a, a community. Then they, they take no uh, a pride in, in what's happening in Columbus because they don't live there. They don't care. 
on it. And I think that that's a fact that has seen over and over on statements that police have made, specifically the eighth floor. And the eighth floor sends the, sends the agenda down to the other officers. If they don't care, the eighth floor don't care, and they're not getting the, the, the detectives aren't getting the backing and the help from the eighth floor, what is it that they're supposed to do? How, how is that, you know, these men and women that go out there, you know, and, and do protect us and are, put themselves in, 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 the, in, the, in the chance of getting hurt on it? And if their eighth floor staff is not supporting them in, in, in the arenas that, you know, what, what is it they can do? So my question and my thought to you is, did Luann Stoyer do the story on her, for herself to seek gen, uh, revenge? For Channel 6 for me dropping them and by having, you know, bringing Channel 4 and Channel 10 and the other news media in? Or did she do it in revenge for her husband, who I've had, you know, nasty conversations with, who has told me things that would absolutely upset the masses? And is she asserting revenge uh, for her, her husband? You know, her husband was accused of beating up, I believe, a 13 year old boy in New Albany several years ago and it, it made the news on it because this boy picked on his son, her son. Now is she defending her husband like her husband defended her son? Or is it the Columbus Police Department uh, wanting to make sure that Crime Stoppers is kept down? Like I said, we've become so powerful with the political folks and in the community that the Columbus Police were not happy. I could tell you that little pranks that they pulled on us, little things that they pulled on us, um, it, it would just, you, you just shake your head, you know, wondering how come and why this goes on in an establishment like that. So it, was she going after me for the Columbus Police Department? You know, I, there was a barricade in, last November, and, um, and a guy who claimed to have a hostage in a hotel room um, did not trust dealing with negotiators. And the only person that he would deal with was with me because he'd known that I was with Crime Stoppers, known that, uh, you know, that Crime Stoppers was, was really, you know, separate from the police. At that time, Crime Stoppers has taken a whole different turn now. But, uh, you know, so I had to go out there and, you know, worked with them um, in the negotiation. And, and it was safe resolve did happen. He did not have uh, a hostage or anybody, but, you know, he did get... Uh, um, taken in and um, is in jail right now. So I know that that made a couple people upset that how come they're calling Crime Stoppers, how come, you know, I got involved, how come I know the 8th floor was upset that that happened. And that's because of the respect and that the trust that we had in the community and that uh, the Columbus Police could not control. So the whole thing with Crime Stoppers with me really became, I believe, several different legs. One was a political thing when the county commissioners um, got involved and with, uh, with a guy by the name of Jeff Milgram, event marketing strategy. He's now vice president of Crime Stoppers. And uh, with a woman by the name of Bernie Pack, who actually her husband's a retired police officer and who uses the Columbus Police in her business. So she's very pro-police. Uh, I'm pro-police, but I'm also pro-justice in, in the fact that justice for all, not justice for few. You know, I can just tell you the war stories and the sad stories I've heard of homicide victims, the uh, missing adults that the Columbus police, you know, and, and again, it, it, it comes from the eighth floor. They're the ones that set the agenda to their, their staff. I think one of the biggest thing the mayor did that was probably one of the best things is the simple fact that now the chief of police and the city council, I guess, voted this. The chief of police is now responsible and can be terminated by the mayor. So that means now they're going to have to be accountable for different things if they're not getting taken care of. I think the safety director, uh, Mitchell Brown, I, I think he's done a great job. So it's, you know, but again, you just can't go in there and upset the apple cart. I, the same thing with me. I, when I started hearing these things and seeing these things, I could have gone to the press then. I could have made it ugly, but it wouldn't have done anything. It would have just all stayed the same. I felt working behind the scenes and trying to make the change behind the scenes was a better way to do it. Whether or not it, it, it'll work, whether or not it's worked, I don't know. I can tell you that I was involved with missing adults and the way the Columbus Police, you know, uh, took care of missing adults was, and they're still not doing it right. You know, there's just recently a, a man that was um, in a car accident 
it was reported that he was in a car accident, that they saw a car squeaving all over the highway, and then a missing person uh, from work. And they did not search, did not look for the man. I know he didn't die right away. I know that he died after the fact. And I think they uh, it was maybe four or five days they found his uh, car off of 270, and he had kicked himself or got himself out of the car and did not die there um, after the accident. Had to crawl out of there. How long he laid there, don't know. But I do know that if they had taken a different response, instead of saying he's an adult, he's allowed to be missing, well, his friends, his family knew that he had health problems, that this was not the type of thing that this man would do. So did they, they had someone call up and say that someone was driving erratically on the freeway. Did they search properly? Why did they wait so long? These are questions that I would have asked if I was still with Crime Stoppers, and I would hold them accountable for what they did. Now, the president of Crime Stoppers is a retired police officer who um, actually, you know, has a business and he's consulting and he needs the police department. So you're not going to find it from him. The vice president, you know, is a, a Jeff Milgram from Vent Marketing Strategy, who's, you know, wants to run for county commissioner. Um, who's friends with the county commissioners, you know, so where does this go? I don't know. But my question to you, and I want to let you know that I believe that this was done to attack me personally. And very disappointed that being a volunteer for many years, supporting the community for many years, and I'll probably do some other videos uh, and, and give some of the other information and talk about some of the other things that I've talked to other people. You know, this will amaze you. We believe, with Crime Stoppers, and even the detective um, even believe that, you know, that they were listening to our phone conversations. We know for a fact that our computer was hacked. We know for a fact there was a device put on our computer to, to trace, to, to mirror what, we're, um, we're, what we were doing. Uh, we know our trash was going through. We, we actually started taking our trash and, and our, our and, and shredding it and keeping it out of the Columbus Police. We changed the phone lines on purpose because the fact that by putting in a separate line that the police could not track who our um, callers were. You know, I, I, again, I can tell you stories upon stories on, on things that they try to do to us. You know, the things that, that, that happened that would prove, we know one homicide where three people were killed that uh, uh, the police got a, uh, went through our, actually, our phone system was able to find out who the tipster was and went to them and said they're not going to get the money unless you, and there was a big reward out for this, you're not going to get the money unless you cooperate and, um, and that totally gets what Crime Stoppers does. We, don't want, to, we want, don't want anybody to say that this tipster was waiting for the money until after the person was convicted because they might be a witness and then, you know, then you can say, well, you know, he's only testifying to get the money. So we always paid, ours was for arrest or an indictment, not conviction, because we wanted nobody ever to say he's only testifying that way. If, in fact, that person was to, to become a, um, a witness, that he was testifying that way for the money. I know I've been rambling on, but I, more importantly, I just wanted to say to the friends that had stood by me, thank you. For those that, you know, are talking behind my back and not talking to me now, shame on you. You were never friends on it, and I just hope the community can understand where and what now Crime Stopper has become. It is now a police organization. You're not safe giving your information, my personal opinion, to Crime Stoppers on it because of the fact that it has now become a police organization, not a community organization. I'll be doing some updates. Feel free to respond back to me, you know, email me, call me on it, but I can just tell you more will be coming out um, that, that, that happened. But, you know, the question is, did ABC do this? as revenge for ABC Fox do this as revenge to Kevin for pulling and going with the other medias or was it Luann Stoyer who was protecting and trying to get seek revenge for her husband who's deputy chief with the Columbus Police Department. You decide.